Alright guys, Touch Creator back again today, hope you're all enjoying your Sunday. Today I wanted to talk about potential meta changes over the coming weeks or coming months surrounding Call of Duty Modern Warfare because over the last couple of days we've seen a lot of action from guns that we haven't really seen too much action from over the first couple of months. Of course, we've seen the M4 at the start of the game was considered really, really good. We had the MP7 in play, then the MP5 really came into the meta and pretty much dominates the meta at the current time. On most maps we're seeing four MP5s, one M4 is generally tends to be the structure on Azir Cave, we'll quite often see it flip the other way around with 4 M4s, 1 MP5, sometimes 3, 2, something like that. But on most maps, it's MP5 dominated. But there's some other guns that want a piece of the pie. And one of them is the Ram 7, a gun that was added, I think, way back in December now. Um, when has pretty much been absent from competitive play. Either the pros like Gentleman's Agreement in it, as it were. But it seems like, to me, it's a very viable weapon. And a lot of people are thinking, damn, this might come into the game and start replacing some of the M4s and some of the MP5s on some maps, which maybe would make a better meta to watch. Leave all your thoughts down in the comment section below as always. Like if you guys enjoy it, subscribe if you're new, I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, let's go into this. So COD Gamepedia, the 1Ks are continuing right now pretty much every weekend for, well, a very long time. The APEC 1K, Renegades, that's Swifty Fighter, Crimson, Setsy and Pred, they win the uh, one down in the Australian region. This is what happened in the European region, so it seems like Insight couldn't play with Team Singularity this week, so Trainhard ended up winning, but Yellow Beanbag, um, fantastic name to be honest, subbed in for them on this occasion. So Keza, Whalers, Sukri, Nasty and Lenny win the European 1K, and Beanbag says, appreciate all the boys over at Singularity for letting me fill in, so some pretty cool stuff over there. Then I wanted to go through this before we got into it. So the meta has happened, but also we have a change in the search and destroy and domination. Well, not the meta change has happened yet, but we have a change to the search and destroy and domination outlook. What the game is looking like right now. Not many people know that Crim6 was a key initiator in the ongoing pro dev dialogue. We had in backups for it. Helped our communication massively. Just thought I'd bring this tweet up because it's uh, very much related to what I wanted to discuss in one second here, which is this. CDL rule changes that will go into effect on, well, tomorrow. Monday, February 17th. Search and destroy round time limit 1 minute 30 down from 2 minutes. So domination round time limit 5 minutes from 6 minutes. Really interesting changes because um, as we'll go and look at in a couple of Reddit comments, I'll look at in a second here. It used to be, I believe, 1 minute 30 way back in the day. Most games in COD history have had it at 1 minute 30 as the S&D round limit. However, in public matches, it's typically been 2 minutes. In this game, the bigger maps, like way back in um, you know, COD 4, it used to be 2 minutes. So, you know, it kind of makes sense in, in that, you know, in that facet of the game. Slower game, you need more time to get map control. These kind of ideas, maybe it does make more sense in that sense to have a longer round time limit. However, they've dropped it to 1 minute 30, which is pretty interesting. It's also interesting to surround the concept of of dead silence and uh, unlocking dead silence in terms of, you know, to me it doesn't seem like they increase the speed at which you get dead silence, which means there's going to be less time for you to just sit around and do nothing. You're going to have to rush people without necessarily having dead silence um, to back you up, which isn't necessarily an ideal situation. However, the key point is here, I guess, domination. The round time limits have gone down to five minutes from six minutes. This makes a lot of sense to me. I'm surprised it wasn't five minutes already. Also means we get to watch less domination and play less domination if you're a pro. So, you know, good news all around, I suppose. But also, this means that the series on the whole are going to be shorter, which maybe is the reason why they've done this. Because we've seen the first couple of events at Minnesota and at London, lots of series overrunning. People expecting series to be one hour 30, as they have been in most Call of Duty games. But in Black Ops 4... It was played at a pretty high pace, right? Like in Search and Destroy, often, you know, it was pretty rare that it came down super late in a round. You typically have some information pretty early. You could play off that. Whereas Search and Destroy is in this game, if they go the distance, like two minutes, playing super, super passive on a map like Arklov Peak, it makes a lot of sense to play a really, really passive game try and work a pick over towards the A-bomb site on the offensive side. Nowadays, you have less time to do that, and there's going to be less of these 15, 16, 17 minute search and destroy tug of wars, which go all the way down to around 11 with lots of situations where you're hitting the time limit, the bomb is planted, and then, you know, it goes another 45 seconds after that. So, you know, I, I think this is maybe a positive change. I do think it has some uh, some you know, recurring impacts that happen that maybe uh, are unexpected to some people. So this is some of the, the Reddit's thoughts here. So it was 1.30 in the beginning, now it's gone back to 2.00. 
so uh, probably because series are taking too long and permanent dead silence is a really key point that should be considered here like the fact that there isn't a, a you know a perk which is dead silence means that people have to feel like they have to wait for it which means the rounds take longer anyway if you just made dead silence a perk that would probably solve the issue for you but as I say maybe some unintended consequences here saying that you know people are going to have to still wait for it which means that people have less chances to use it and maybe that's not exactly going to be a, a you know a great decision in the long run but I would be intrigued to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below on this because this is some pretty uh, pretty significant changes that could affect the way the games are going to be played. In my opinion, the games will probably be still just as entertaining, but hopefully the uh, the series will go a little bit quicker. So from a fan perspective, I'm pretty happy with that. We don't want another London situation where the event ends up finishing at quarter past 11 when it was meant to finish at half nine, and the hype battle had something to do with that. But of course, that was a topic I discussed several days ago. So let's get into this then. We've had these couple of weapons that have come into play. The Ram 7 and the Growl, I believe. I think in, um, I forget which game. It was Black Ops 4 right there, the Grav that came in, which was like a Galil kind of weapon. So this is the Growl, I suppose. This is an SMG, and I, you know, I've, I've seen some some clips of people using this on stream the last couple of days in tens. I'm pretty sure this was added very, very recently. There was like the Growl and the Striker that were added in this recent Season 2 package update. Now, you know, some people have been trying it out in tens, and supposedly um, the pros haven't got these things gentlemen's agreemented as of yet, which honestly makes sense, given the MP5 is the dominant weapon. If you can come up with a couple of weapons that might be able to compete, maybe that would make sense. But as I've talked about a while ago on this channel and also on the Spitfire podcast, the way the attachment system works in this game... I don't think it's ever likely that you're going to have like a three or four weapon meta in any case because the fact of the matter is the MP5 is the best all-round SMG, the, M the M4 at the current time is the best all-round assault rifle which means that because you can have so much variance in terms of the attachments you don't need to use any other weapon, any other SMG or any other AR to get any other range advantages. If you want a long range M4 you put attachments on the M4 to make it long range. If you want a fast close range M4 which most people are using now the no stock um, you know, kind of commando four grip stipple grip tape, no iron psych, you know, compensator type M4 setup, um, or, or I said maybe no uh, no iron sight, I meant like using the iron sights, that's a really common setup you'll see nowadays, but if someone's a longer M4 class, slap a, slap a you know, sight on it, maybe a Merc 4 grip for a bit of a longer range sight, um, you know, that's the kind of thing that happens, and it's a similar situation with the MP5, so in my opinion, it seemed pretty obvious to me that it was only going to be the best SMG, only going to be the best AR that was used. To me, it doesn't seem like the Growl can, can switch up for the MP5 for sure. It's probably got to be used as more of an AR hybrid, as they say here. And I think uh, BX Lee gives some good advice here on, um, you know, what, what kind of things to use on it. Drifter Barrel over the Archangel as well. Now, this round weapon is, is really the interesting one because this was added a long time ago. And a lot of people are saying right now the RAM is really, really strong. I watched an exclusive Ace video on this very briefly before I watched this. It has the same damage profile as the M4, but it has a pretty significantly higher fire. Now the recoil is not as fun by any means as it is on the M4, but pros are over the history have done pretty damn well at controlling recoil, especially you guys remember the first event of Infinite Warfare if you watch that, the OSA, it was the, what it was called, it was like a white kind of um, ARX looking gun, but it was full auto. It shot right up to the sky, but the bros got really quick at the first event. It became really obvious this was really damn good on LAN. People used it at the first event and dominated with it, those who got used to it. I think for Cento, Urban were a couple of players that were really, really good with it at the first event, controlling that recoil, and it was just a dominant weapon. and a great firepower, but it also had um, you know, the recoil to kind of compensate it. But for the pros, that maybe doesn't make too much difference. The interesting part is, of course, where has the RAM been over the last couple of months in terms of competitive play? Why have people not been using it? So this is another comment here on reddit so this is his, the ram 7 upper in the top left is op as hell this is starting to look like someone didn't want to abide by the ga so now everything is open karma was asking for ram 7 classes yesterday karma says you see yesterday the gun is insane it's a clunkier bigger vector and honestly the weapon looks kind of like a maddox I do find it kind of interesting how people are talking about the M4, you know, always in Call of Duty history, be like, oh, why do we have an AR meta? Like, all the, the Maddox is being used in Black Ops 4, and it was the K-Bar, of course, in Infinite Warfare, and now we've got an SMG meta, people are like, oh, you know, I wish it was a little bit more balanced. At the end of the day, these are the kind of things that happen, not too much you can do about it, but given the RAM is a potential, my issue with it really is that it's possible that if the RAM does end up being the best gun, it's just going to be used over the M4 in all circumstances. However, it must be said, with the recoil on it, I imagine the M4 still does get a significant amount of play, even if the RAM does come into the meta on certain situations. And maybe on a map like Azir Cave, a bit longer range, you might want to stick with more M4s, but definitely the RAM 7 in place of some of the SMGs on some of the maps could be a legitimate alternative. 
but um, yeah, it kind of looks like a K-Bar Maddox type of weapon, which is a pretty scary thing to look like, given what we've seen those weapons do in previous Call of Duty games. The gun is insane. Will it actually be used? If it's used, it's 100% competing with the M4. Those two have been tied for the best they are since the round came out, in my opinion. Those of you guys who play uh, more public matches than me will be able to comment on this better than I will about, like, you know, whether this actually is a legitimate competitor in the long term. It's ridiculously OP. It shreds. Going to be using, going to be interesting to see if the Growl or Striker do anything, but the Ram will definitely shake things up, seeing if the pros are going to be using it. I think having a variety in the meta in the game is great for sure, which I definitely agree with. As I said, though, my one risk is that if you are going to have a, a weapon that comes into the meta, the attachment situation in the game means that it's kind of likely that uh, one weapon will just replace another weapon or it won't replace it at all, especially given how nasty some of those M4 classes are right now. But I can definitely imagine some pros uh, trying to bring out the uh, the ram and make it work and some more comments on here about the growl with arch barrel uh, arch angel barrel and ranger grip so just wanted to give you guys some insight on what might be the best guns that uh, might be the best attachments to use on these weapons in the game right now so the 5.56 uh, millimeter ammunition definitely implies this is kind of a slower clunkier more hybrid type of weapon especially if it's technically considered in the smg category or where exactly it sits so uh, yeah and a lot of people saying the striker isn't really all that it's cracked up to be but maybe the RAM could compete with the M4. Is that something you guys would like to see in the game? Would you like to have the meta switch up? I don't really mind the meta right now, but I imagine it could be pretty stale over time, especially the amount of SMGs. Like, in an ideal world, I don't want the M4s to be replaced by uh, RAMs. I want maybe the, the fourth SMG to be replaced by a RAM and have, like, a three SMG or a two SMG, two RAM, one M4 type of meta, similar to what we had really in Black Ops 4. I liked it. You had the ICR, the slow, methodical, kind of long-range, uh, you know, long-range weapon. You didn't see more than one of them on a map usually. Then a couple of Maddoxes, a couple of Sorgs. That's what you kind of see towards the end. That could be a similar situation. You have a couple of uh, a couple of MP5s, a couple of Rams, and then an M4 or maybe two M4s, one Ram on some map, depending on individual player uh, perspectives. That would be an interesting thing to see. But I wonder what the likelihood of that is. So yeah, just to finish off with then, so I just saw this on Reddit yesterday. Been waiting for this a long time. Thank you, Infinity World 2v2 gunfight tournaments. I really cool they're moving into stuff like this in the Call of Duty scene right now. And, you know, we really do hope that Infinity Ward really get their act together, I sense. And, um, you know, you may push these changes through. At the same time, they're making changes to the CDL rules. One thing I didn't really mention, actually, earlier when I talked about these CDL rule changes is that a lot of, uh, thanks to Colton for uh, pointing this out to me, by the way, but a lot of professionals are applying to this tweet saying like, yo, this could be pretty good or this could be pretty bad. What he says to me, like, did they even consult with a lot of professionals when they made this decision? Or did they just say, yeah, this seems pretty reasonable. We need to cut down the game times. Let's just run with it. Because a lot of the professional consensus surely would have been, um, oh yeah, this is great. Thanks Activision for listening. If they actually were, you know, listening and taking on feedback rather than just making their own decisions. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to see. Krim, I think it was Clayster actually said that the communication between Activision and the pros is pretty damn good as Tony Flame was talking about in that tweet I just mentioned but then uh, I think Clayster also said that it's the communication between Activision and Infinity Ward where the uh, the developers are lacking down but this 2v2 gunfight tournament kind of stuff definitely implies that they're going for a more competitive approach yes they have the CDL playlist now so hopefully we can open the coming months we get something ranked um, that would be great for Infinity Ward because we don't usually get anything approaching that hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you did subscribe if you're new as always thanks for watching I will see you next time